I'm Taylor. I'm going to show you how to build a financial model for a startup using this free template in just a few minutes. So the runway and cash budget tool or the pre-seed and seed financial budget tool is intended to build a model, a cost budget, as well as a revenue forecast for an early stage company so they can understand overall cash flows, overall economics of the business. Now, this model has a number of sheets which can be discarded or they're informational sheets only or hidden if not needed. The core of the model is really around the get started and the forecast sheet. Then the key reports, summaries, sources and uses statements are uh, additional information, just kind of like taking the base, the base forecast and kind of pulling out the most important information in formats we're kind of used to seeing. So the core of the assumptions are on get started. Now you can set the time scale wherever you want to, whether you want to build a monthly, quarterly, or annual model, you can set the time scale. The by default, it goes up to 36 months or three years um, on a per month basis, but it's easy to insert additional columns and rows to make it a five-year model if you, if you, if you desire. Now, the, all the assumptions here for the balance sheet assumptions are not necessary, they're optional um, in, case they're, in case they apply to you. Uh, you don't have to make any assumptions regarding them, uh, but it's useful if you need to assume that your actual payment of a lot of expenses and revenues are at the same time as when you actually kind of recognize them if you're using kind of accrual accounting. So the core of the model is really on the forecast sheet. And the way this kind of works is there's a structure here to enter in all your kind of revenues, expense, operating metrics items. And then there's a set of categories that basically collect all of the data you kind of input and then uses that to then create all the financial analysis and reports and the financial statements from there. The categories for revenues and SGA and cost of goods sold are, can be modified. The actual names can be modified to fit what's descriptive for you, uh, as well as the actual kind of operating metrics like users, customers, clients, subscribers, whatever it is. Um, the, the core of the model can be used in a variety of ways. You can use the core inputs, just type in numbers. You can use the core inputs and use these drivers to build automatic growth forecasts. You can also use your own revenue forecast you built, whatever, wherever it is, and just link in into these sections inside the model here, and then it will do all the reports and statements automatically. So I'll give you a couple examples of how to do the revenue side. So for example, I can build a revenue forecast um, let's just say I'm going to start off with uh, uh, $1,000 in revenues. I'm going to say it starts at month one. Uh, and then I'm going to say it repeats you know, every month. And this just assumes that revenue is the same kind of going forward. Now, if I want to build a growth rate, for example, I can say, well, you know, maybe it's going to grow. It's going to grow. It's going to change every month. Maybe it's going to grow by 5%. And this creates an automatic uh, growth rate to it. Now, I can you know, modify this and maybe revenues don't start until month six. Uh, I can do a whole bunch of other changes to it. Now, let's perhaps say, well, maybe I don't want to model revenues, I want to model users. So, and use my use user's forecast as my rate of kind of grow revenues. That's fine. I'm actually just gonna change the label here to users. I'm gonna use this same structure here uh, to, this now, this now actually now means users instead of revenues. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to, I've already pre-created a, a category called users. And now for revenues, I'm going to make this, this is called a revenue. Um, now, what I'm basically going to do is this, this, is a, this line becomes a forecast of users. And for, for revenues, I'm going to say, well, maybe it's like $5 per user um, starting in month one using the driver users. So it repeats every month. Changes on, okay, it doesn't go change. Yeah, number per. So right now, now this actual forecast here of revenues is being driven by the number of users. So the model is automatically recognizing the number of users from this line and applying $5 per user. Uh, and this is already kind of flowing through into the summary sheet where you can see revenues, net income. Now, for example, now I'm going to add in some costs. You know, I could say that uh, for a number of these costs, I could say maybe it's, um, these costs can be overall big descriptive big descriptive items like a department level expense or it could be detailed expenses like rent or utilities or payroll taxes or whatever it is um, or it can be an individual hire CEO a head of product whatever it is um, or it can be groups of people as well customer support expenses whatever it is the model is flexible to kind of handle any sort of structure or any sort of rationale you want to use to model out kind of your expenses I'll, do, I'll show you a couple of examples of how to do this so let's just assume that this one's just a regular expense that starts, uh, it just goes every month the same. Um, we could assume uh, the same thing for, you know, for this one, for example. 
Now, for, for example, here's an example of an expense. We could do an expense as a percentage of revenues, for example. So I'm going to say, you know, this expense is based off of, uh, actually, I'm going to do, a, I'm going to do an expense that's a, that's a uh, cost of sales, that's a per user basis. So I'm going to do this cost of sales. Let's say this is a, um, maybe it's a 199 cost of sales, drive some with one. I'm going to choose number per. Um, maybe this cost here for uh, overhead is 500 starts a month, one repeats every month. And perhaps maybe this grows as the percentage change. Maybe every six months it grows by 10%. Um, and so this will stay the same and grow. So now we have a mixture of revenues and costs and expenses here. You know, maybe we're, we're raising, maybe we're spending some capital expenditures. Maybe we have some depreciation amortization roll through here. Maybe we're raising some debt or equity investments. So this one I'm going to assume that I'm raising you know, a $500,000 seed round and it's an equity round. It starts in month one. It doesn't repeat. So now already on key reports, I'm already seeing an idea of like burn and kind of cash balance over time. So this actually shows I'm not actually starting off cash flow positive from the very beginning. So I'm just going to increase this one to. Let's see. So now on key reports, now I have an expense as key kind of keeps kind of growing and changing. So maybe instead of that, I'll, maybe I'll do it like. So I start to see a, kind of a cash balance starts off and goes up over time. I see cash flows from, from operations. If I see on a summary sheet here, I already see an annual forecast of revenues, costs of goods sold, SGNA, uh, net income, uh, cash balances over time as well as cash and financing um, and already kind of a simple basic balance sheet. Now all these details come from the key reports which is a three, I'm sorry, which from the statements which is a, a traditional three statement consolidated financial statements, income statement, balance sheet statement, cash flows and then the key reports is kind of the graph of expenses and cash flows and income and, and burn and cash over time. Um, this structure enables you to create a forecast very fast using this forecast sheet. Um, but also is infinitely flexible to build any sort of additional kind of logic to your own forecast as you want to, create your own sheets, create your own revenue forecast using whatever driver or structure you want to, and just link it directly into the model. Because these numbers here can be generated by the, by the formulas, but you can also just directly type the numbers if you want to. You know, there's no limitation in overriding the formulas, or if you create it that somewhere else, just do equals and a link to like wherever else you put your forecast. So it's infinitely flexible for however structure you want to use. If you have any questions on how to use this, I'm happy to help.